Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being present with us as more than two or three are gathered together here among us. Mm -hmm. And we thank you that uh, it's another week and it's that much closer to your coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we pray that our discussions today that you would enlighten us and, and get us greater understanding of your intent and your will of your word. And uh, we pray that uh, we will be receptive and we'll take mm -hmm. it and, and that our hearts will go closer to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And thank you for uh, being our redeemer to in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Thomas. Um, time for us to share uh, from our own walks with the Lord last week. Anything that stands out, any encounters that you would like to share with your church family? Well, on Monday, my daughter and my husband and my sister, we went to um, Escondido. They had a performance with an orchestra and then the ballet dancing. It was so beautiful. It was a gift, a Christmas gift that our daughter had given all three of us, so all four of us went. And I was very blessed. But as I'm sitting there, everyone's wearing masks, of course. There's like hundreds of people in the auditorium there. And then my mind just went to, you know, my Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father. And I'm thinking, you know, I hope and pray that they are connected with you. That, that word connection to me is just keeps mm. popping up in my mind that we we all need to be connected closer and closer to our Heavenly Father, mm. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Mm. So that's why I want to share that. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, Sister Rita. Um, that reminds me of a paragraph that I, I read uh, this week that said, um, prayer is not what we do is who we are is we are a walking prayer. We are a continuous connection with the Lord. Uh, we, we don't just sit down and do it here and then forget about it. It's a continuous um, way of, of being, of living. Mm -hmm. That's just like the time that I shared about uh, walking, people walking next to my car. And you mentioned mm -hmm. about right all the cars on the freeway and i think we went through that before about lots of people out there in this world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i talked to um i went to the, the bend church uh monday night there's a, mm -hmm. a prayer session and uh there was two ladies that uh, had just returned from Kenya to the Kajuro. I, I don't know if I pronounced that right. It's a girls' school in the Maasai area where they rescue them from child marriages and things like that. And so uh, what I got from that is that it, it I could see a difference in them from before they left and when they come back about the efforts of, uh, in the mission field and what a difference is that people who are uh, really living close to God and, and the efforts that are going on there. And, and I think it did, they helped the folks there, but I think by going it, it helped them. And so it was very enlightening and very, a uh, very positive thing to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mission is one of those things that is not optional. A lot of churches think that oh, we, we're only focused on worship and, and mission is not what we do. Some other churches need to do it. And uh, that reminds me of a discussion I had with my colleagues and Elder Lourdes, who said, you know, the longer we uh, sit in, in, in the church pews up on that hill without uh, going into the um, community, going into the mission field, uh, the more we will just wither on the branches and not, and not produce any fruit. So um, thank you for bringing that to our attention, Thomas. 
And that doesn't mean that everybody has to be gifted in that field. There are different gifts and different callings. And that's, that's why it's so good to be in a church with all of the diversity of gifts. Interesting, you just brought up something that was important. This is the exact same conversation I heard on Monday night uh, by uh, Pastor uh, Brissett is uh, his concern about is our church doing enough out there in the mission field? So it's not only a campus hill, it's, there's several places mm -hmm. that have that express that concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I would like to ask my brothers and sisters uh, in this prayer group to uh, pray for two things uh, that Campus Hill is engaged, hoping to engage in. Uh, one of them is a revival, a church revival program where the plan is to bring in speakers and um, and have begin to invite our friends to listen to the gospel through these various speakers. So that's one program. And the other one is the one that uh, Pastor Christian uh, mentioned here about our getting off the hill and into the community. Um, we are partnering with a group called Parks and Streets um, that have a ministry feeding the homeless. And we're adding another level to this program, hopefully by the grace of God and through much prayer. We want to build on what these young people have been doing in uh, Riverside, San Bernardino, Colton, wherever the Lord uh, guides us. And there are people and funds and uh, passion uh, for the promotion of this presence of Campus Hill in the community. And uh, the enemy is going to put a lot of obstacles in our way. And uh, that's why we need a lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. So we'll be giving more details about that later. But Absolutely. Thank you, Elder. The revival and the outreach, um, very important components of, of church life. Thank you. You know, I had a few meetings at work and a few meetings out in my topic. Are we doing enough to serve the underprivileged. So when Thomas and Elder Lotus mission for the mission work, I think, um, you know, Lord has and it's our individual mission to reach out to the homeless, reach out to the underprivileged, population in our community to um, make a difference. Um, I have sat on a curb, sat on multiple curbs, people buying them food and seated and talking with them. Um, so I, I kind of feel their pain um, that what they go through there are a lot of cars, a lot of people away without even looking at them. And I'm drunk or they are disheveled. They're not dressed well. They don't smell good. Whatever reason, I don't know. But it takes the initiative to reach out and find out why. A um, couple of times I did that. Um, in the afternoon, pretty intoxicated person. Um, when I was talking to him, he said, there's nothing else to do rather than getting drunk to 
um, sorrow his, you know, bury his pain and challenges, and all that. Um, that touched me in many ways. I understand hunger, you know, uh, growing up, we don't, we didn't have a lot of stuff. Our parents provided that as they could, and I had four siblings, and um, sometimes we had to just go by bare minimum. Um, but, you know, I, it shocked me like this. Uh, when I see the homeless and the poverty in this, that it'll help. So, and I don't want to name organization or anything, but sometimes, you know, I get conflicted with talking to Christians, Adventists, or any other other denomination Christians. They are their thought process or their, their viewpoints of these, these persons very uh, eager to judge and call them drug, addict, drug addicts or whatever you call it, but nobody reaches out. So that has been bothering me for a while. I've been reaching out in a small way that I can anytime I could, but I have been addressing these issues with multiple people to reach out to them, you know, that's, I think that's our mission. That's, that's what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Reach out to the poor, the hungry, the discarded, not to go with the, the the CEOs, the lawyers, and whoever, you know, so you not type so. I'm, I'm really glad to hear Jivika say that because we're already looking for volunteers. You sound like a real good candidate. <laughs> yes. Count me. <laughs> Anytime. Awesome. 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 Not, Anytime. Not only Anything you do, the privilege, <laughs> count me. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. uh, Elder Jivika has a, has a uh, wealth of experience professionally in, in that field, and, mm -hmm. but also passion. And um, listening to you, sir, talking about you know, organizations, and yes, we know, we know them. We, we, we're involved with them, we work for them either past tense or present tense. Um, what, what came to mind just as you were talking um, is a passage from Matthew 6, I think, when um, the disciples realized that the, the masses, the multitudes there, there were thousands of people, they were hungry. And he said, just, just dismiss them, end up the divine service and let them go to the villages so they could purchase some food. And Jesus said something very striking. He said, you feed them. Mm -hmm. And their first reaction was, with what? <laughs> we, we would have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. And then he said, how much do you have? Go and find out. Mm -hmm. And that sounds crazy because <laughs> there were by some estimates, uh, between 15 to 20,000 people mm -hmm. there, a full stadium. So you fed and, basically everybody in the Staples Center. That, yes. That equivalent mm -hmm. amount. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And he said, what do you have? You know, what is it that you have? You must have something. And they found something. It was small, but it stretched enough to feed everybody to their full, to where they could no longer eat. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a sampling. It was, you know, I cannot eat any more than this. And they were left over. So uh, if we believe in the same God, mm -hmm. 
there should be no fear about resources, yeah. about how we could go forward. What do we have? Amen. Mm -hmm. What do we have? Everybody has something. When we bring that back to the Lord, he makes the miracle. Yeah. Beautiful. Anyone else who would like to share before we go into a session of prayer? I would like for us to keep in prayer the Rojas family, uh, the mother of uh, brother Edister Rojas passed away. Um, the family had COVID. Uh, they all recovered well with the exception of uh, their mom who was in her 90s. And it obviously um, took a, a, a toll on her. Um, I talked to Eddie right before the prayer meeting. I, I tried calling him in the morning. He was at work. And then uh, before prayer meeting, I was able to connect with him. And um, mama was Spanish speaking only. So he had Pastor Julio on FaceTime last night um, and had a prayer and a blessing with the entire family. Him and his siblings were there with, with the mom who again would only speak Spanish. And they had a very special and, and sacred time together. And soon after that um, conversation and, and prayer with Pastor Julio, minutes after that, she passed into mm -hmm. rest. Uh, the family is at peace. They mm -hmm. praise the Lord for doing what the Lord does in his own timing. And they, they uh, did say they would appreciate if the church family would pray for the family mm -hmm. uh, who's mourning now. Any other requests that anybody may want to bring to our list for tonight? I, I had a request from my, my friend Joshua and Oegas Kenya and his family. Um, he's caring for a, a boy that uh, he got at four years old who was born with AIDS from his parents. His parents passed away and he was sick this last week. And uh, I just pray for them as a family and to uh, the Lord to bless them. Uh, he's doing a lot of work for the church there as a head elder. And so keep them in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Anyone else? All right, well, let's pray together. I will start and I'm going to ask Sister Diane Kovac if you would be so kind to conclude the chain of prayer. Lord, we come to you tonight. Um, as a family, uh, the challenges that we've encountered over the past few days, many of which cannot be spoken, have been allowed for a precise purpose So, in our life. So we could only bring you words of gratitude and praise for allowing us to go through what we have been feeling. If you would not have deemed us worthy of these trials, you would not have allowed these trials in our life. So they're not random. And they, th their pain is not over our ability to endure, but rather these challenges strengthen us and bring us closer to you. Yeah. Oh, how we would love to be able to open up about a lot of things. And yet many times we just are silent and we just raise our silent voices towards you during daytime during nighttime and especially nighttime when there's just nobody else around there's no support and so we come to you this evening again bringing our petitions those most mm -hmm. intimate petitions that only you and us know we present them at your feet lord and trusting that you would very carefully attend to each one of them I ask that you would be with our children, especially those who are um, challenged in ways that are unique to their age and their developmental stages, 
and their physical and mental health. These are most important responsibility that we have and we present them to you. We entrust to you our elderly with their weaknesses, their feeble bodies, but wise minds. And in some cases, um, uh, decompensating minds due to aging and other factors. We entrust them at your feet as well. And we give ourselves to you, Lord, with everything we bring to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, our hearts are filled with gratitude tonight. Thanking you for the good and the difficult and everything in between in our lives. We thank you and praise you and honor you and glorify you because you are worthy to receive all of this from us. You are so generous. You have been so kind and understanding of us. We thank you for the witness of Jesus, his perfect life on this earth mm. and uh, his terrible death and his glorious resurrection. And so Lord, we are filled with gratitude because we know that Jesus is interceding as we pray, interpreting the deep longings of our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for these petitions that have been placed before us tonight, especially the Rojas family. Mm -hmm. We pray that you will give them comfort Mm -hmm. We thank you that they were able to have this special service with uh, mm -hmm. Pastor Julio at a critical time in the life of Edister's mother. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Lord, for that family, and we pray mm -hmm. special blessings on them. We mm -hmm. think of uh, Thomas's friend, Joshua, who has taken on the care of this child, and we pray special mercies and wisdom as uh, he tries to guide this child's life. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, for our church. Mm -hmm. We thank you that there's a deep desire to do something for you, mm -hmm. to honor you, to glorify you. And so, Lord, we are seeing that this effort at revival is going to bring the speakers that we need to hear. Mm -hmm. And this program of outreach is going to draw the volunteers, the funds, and everything that we need to make this happen for your honor and glory, not for our own, but for your honor and glory, for the prosperity of your church. Mm -hmm. We know that these are things that are relevant and meaningful to the world around us. And we want to be part of that outreach. So, Lord, we thank you that you have brought all of us together tonight. You know what is on the heart of each person that has come tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pray that you will lift heavy burdens, mm -hmm. wherever they may be. Mm -hmm. Discouragement, fatigue, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what's there. And we pray that you will lift it that we may leave this place filled with the spirit of God to share with others and lift others who are walking along this path of life. Mm -hmm. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I want to add my petition for all these prayer requests that we have tonight. Mm -hmm. Lord, I especially pray for the Rojas family. Mm -hmm. Please be with them, Lord, in their grieving the loss of the mother from COVID. Mm -hmm. And I pray you will comfort them, Lord, at this difficult time. Mm -hmm. And I also want to pray for Joshua mm -hmm. in Kenya for... Um, of the care, how they're caring for this boy with AIDS. Lord, please mm -hmm. bless this family and mm -hmm. bless all of their efforts mm -hmm. and also bless them as they work for the church there. Mm -hmm. 
And I pray that the, there will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit um, on their church, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I, we live in such troubled times, but we know that you are always there with us to, to sustain us and to mm -hmm. give us strength, Lord. Mm -hmm. And for this, we, we just praise your holy name. Yes. And I want to thank you for Pastor Christian and his wonderful leadership. Um, in our prayer meetings every Wednesday night, Lord, it is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. These things I ask in thy holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. As, um, as everybody was praying, one thought came to mind. Um, every once in a while, we may experience some fatigue. And, um, and that's expected. Uh, but then the thought already connected with the passage that I, I just referred to before in Matthew 6 when Jesus asked the disciples to feed the multitudes right before he did that you know what else he did he took them aside to allow them to rest mm. he took them aside to allow them to rest but the multitudes followed followed them and so when they were at their lowest that's when the miracle happened. Instead of just chilling, instead of just you know doing nothing, they had more work. So sometimes when we may feel the most exhausted, maybe the most disconnected, it may just be the best opportunity for the Lord to do something very special mm -hmm. through us. So keep that in mind for next mm -hmm. time when you feel you know, exhausted. <laughs> We're continuing the study with the valuable pearl or the pearl of great price, depending on the, uh, uh, on the uh, version, translation that, that you're reading. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Auntie Rita to, to read the passage at the top, if you'd be so kind. Oh, the very top when I'm unable to, there's something blocking it. Yeah. <laughs> I can read the second one. Yeah, all right. It's blocking, it's blocking all of ours. Uh oh, all right. Let's see. Oh, there it is. is. This, okay. It went away. Better? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead then. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. And Thomas, would you be kind to read the second one? Or God's kingdom is like a jewel merchant on the hunt for exquisite pearls. Finding one that is flawless, he immediately sells everything and buys it. Anybody remembers the parable from last week? Oh, the, the, the uh, valuable item in the field and and uh, he went and bought the field. Yes, the treasure in the field. Anybody uh, sees some uh, parallels and maybe some differences? In the first parable from last week, uh, the man stumbles upon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the treasure here. There's intent. The merchant uh -huh. is looking for fine pearls, and then he finds mm -hmm. it. So that's one difference. Mm, very good point. Yes, yes. I think Dan even uh, pointed out something about trespassing. And this one appears to be more of a coordinated, intentional uh, search for something specific. What else do you see here? Maybe just in this one or maybe in comparison to the one from last week? Does anybody have pearls at home? Yeah. No? Oh, okay. Thank you, Doris. <laughs> I purchased knows that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I purchased my wife um, um, pearl. Um, I don't even know what you call it. That, that, that you put around your neck. Uh, necklace? Pearls. 
A string of pearls. Necklace, okay. yes. Uh, when we went to Australia, um, we went there for a wedding and uh, uh, they were all white, beautiful pearls. Mm -hmm. I was uh, very impressed with, with, with their texture, the way they, they look. And uh, apparently many of these don't even need polishing. That's how well they are produced. So uh, let's uh, try to educate ourselves a little with regard to these pearls. And uh, I brought some material. If uh, uh, Diane Kovac would be able to read this for us. Yes. Pearl, a calcareous concretion formed as an abnormal growth within the shell of some species of mollusks. The concretion is made generally of the mineral aragonite, calcium carbonate, or rarely of calcite, also calcium carbonate, together with the organic substance known as conchiolin. The microscopic crystals of aragonite are deposited on and around a tenuous network formed of the conchiolin. Genuine pearls result from the accidental entry of a grain of sand or a parasite into the pearl oyster, which coats such a source of irritation with nacre or mother of pearl. And I'm gonna ask you to continue to read because there's more to this, if you'd be so kind. Sure. Pearl is the only gem made by a living process and the only one that comes from the sea. Pearls used to be obtained in considerable number from the Red Sea. But now first ranking of any oriental pearls for superior form, drop-like in luster, iridescent, are those produced by Mohar, a variety of the Melagrina, vulgaris, species of mollusk found in the Persian Gulf. And there's one more passage. Okay. An unblemished pearl is one of the most ancient symbols of perfection and was among the most precious of gems. This is probably the reason why the word is used metaphorically for anything of great value. Mm. Does this broaden up a little bit more, mm. this, uh, the yes. understanding about this, uh, this parable? Let's see, yeah, I, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I've learned a lot I didn't know. <laughs> mm. Mm. I, I'm struck by the accidental nature mm. of this thing that is so valuable. It just, yes. it doesn't ha happen automatically or uh, intentionally, it's just sort of accidental. And then a little grain of sand happens to come through and mm. happens to, it's also amazingly ironic how how it's formed and yet it becomes such a valuable thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just exactly what was said there. And plus now you add a symbol of perfection mm -hmm. and uh, out of something that was considered in a mollusk an irritant. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. um, wow. There's something else about pearls especially uh, necklaces, you don't wear them, they lose their luster, they become worthless almost. The mm. luster comes in wearing. You must wear them from time to time because of the way they are born. Mm. Wow, I didn't know that. No, that's, that's very important, yeah. There was a story once a long time ago and I had read that, and that was my fascination with pearls has always been that it, it, it's clean. It's to me, it's unpretentious, but it's got a, a, a luster. A very, very wealthy woman had died and had her, you know, uh, very valuable pearls in a bank vault. And regularly, two or three times a year, they go in and have a woman in the bank wear them until the estate was all resolved because the pearls were going to become a real problem. Mm. So I think wearing them, having to wear them also, the luster 
of what the pearl is interesting in the Bible being used in this parable. I think the use, the contact, the wear has to play into something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Right. And and going back to, to the irritant too, um, it, character in this world you know you read again and again of the characters in the bible and you read from the writings of Ellen white and it's the trials of life it's the irritations of life that um to, that god uses to develop um, character and to transform us into his likeness you think of you know the, the story of joseph um, the story of jacob you can just go through um life after life where i'm looking at the book of ezra right now and the first the king would make a decree in favor and then you know against them and and god um is allowing those trials of life to, to bring out a, a luster and a, a beauty in mm -hmm. in our life that he greatly desires and that's going to bind us to him throughout all eternity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i love that so i love it yeah. This whole um, pearl starts out as like a grain of sand, mm -hmm. very, very small. And looking back, there was another parable of the mustard seed, which started out very small. I don't mm -hmm. know, is there any correlation to that, where things start out real small, then becomes a symbol of perfection as mm -hmm. it grows, and uh, mm -hmm. to where it becomes something that you want, that you'll get give everything that you have to have that. Mm. well if we know anything about god's world is that uh, there's always a, a growth of progression there so i think that there's a lot of truth to what you're saying uh thomas yeah dan this, this sentence strikes me uh this is probably the reason why the word is used metaphorically for anything of which value and if you think of the parable and it's comparing the kingdom of heaven to the merchant going out, searching, if you will, for anything of great value. And when he finds it, he gives up everything for that. Now, if you apply the, the idea of, of anything of great value being your life and my life, If the kingdom of heaven, if Christ is searching, he finds something of great value like you and me, mm -hmm. then he gives up everything he has in order to acquire that, in order to save us. I, I think we're heading towards a, a similar interpretation like we had last week, except this week, yeah. we're not falling into, into that trap, into the first trap that easily and then we're, we're leaving our minds more open to a potential dual interpretation here one of the um, commentaries here uh, point to to this uh, kind of interpretation uh, Thomas would you be kind to read this for us yeah. Other Jewish accounts of finding expensive pearls typically emphasize the finder's piety. Thus, a Jewish tailor pays an outrageous price for a fish because he needs it to keep the Sabbath, yet finds in it a pearl that supplies his needs the rest of his life. Jesus, however, emphasizes only the value of the pearl and the joy of finding it. So this story was not new. Now, many of the stories, the parables that Jesus told, uh, they were not invented by him. Uh, they were grafted on by him. And that was intentionally because Jesus could have invented stories that were, that were never told, or he could have created real stories uh, that were never heard of or seen, just like we have the stories of the New Testament. Um, but he wanted to use narratives that were familiar to the culture that he was speaking to and so if he would come today he would probably use some of the narratives that are familiar with our culture with our western thinking and mentality 
And so this story was fairly popular among his audience, but he switches the components to emphasize that which was really important, particularly the value of the pearl and the joy of finding it. These things we, find, we found on, in the other parable as well, the parable of the treasure. When a person finds it, they, they're jubilant. And this particular individual who's also, this trader who's also intentionally looking for the pearl is also jubilant that he's found it. And this is the passage from Matthew Henry commentary. Um, Auntie Rita, are you still with us? Can you read this for us? Uh, yes, of course. Those who would have a savings, saving interest in Christ must be willing to part with all of him, leaving all to follow him. Whatever stands in opposition to Christ or in competition with him for our love and service, we must cheerfully quit it, though every so dear to us, though ever so dear to us. A man may buy gold too dear, but not this pearl of price. Hmm. Matthew Henry here again leans towards the interpretation of the kingdom of heaven being the pearl or us finding in Jesus this valuable uh, pearl. Um, as I've introduced last week to you, the possibility of two interpretations, I do it again this week because that is the case in my opinion and feel free to disagree if you want to that's okay but the joy of finding christ is equally important in the narrative of the scripture of the of the plan of salvation to the joy of christ saving us and last week, we read these two passages. I wanted us to, again, read these two passages about now Christ, what he did in order to provide for our salvation, what he traded in order to buy our salvation. And then we'll read the passage in chapter 3, how Paul describes his trade-off in order to accept the salvation coming from Christ. Would someone like to read this passage for us, please? Okay, well, uh, I'll go ahead then. Uh, Christ Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. This is Christ who sells everything he has with the option of never, ever being able to regain it as he came to provide salvation for us. There was no guarantee that that which he set aside and did not use it, would ever be restored to him. He put it all aside, knowing that it may be the last time he will ever see it. It may be the last time he would ever be in the presence of his father. He did it knowingly and intentionally. Because he looked at us and he said, I love them too much. They are my treasure. They are my 
pearl. They are in my image and in my likeness. And I will trade everything in order to have them. There was nothing that God spared in order to provide salvation for us. Absolutely nothing. And then Paul writes about what he traded the moment he beheld the beauty of Christ. Did someone read this passage for us? What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Mm. I was reading a devotional that has excerpts of, I guess, the great controversy today. It's from many years ago, but I picked up the book of one of many. And I didn't realize that in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had prayed three times, asking his father. First time he said, if it's your will that I not, you know, that this cup passes me, then the other one was, okay, if it's your will, I'll honor you. But that the third time that he was praying the same prayer, the second, the second prayer, she mentioned that the cup, it was trembling in his hand and that he could have very well just said, ah, be gone with this race. I'm not going to do this. I, that, that was maybe a little bit of a, my interpretation, but that's basically what she said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to think that he was on the precipice of teeter tottering and he could have just said, forget these people. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. And the emphasis of the last two or three days has been in this devotional book, like I said, is primarily from the great controversies from what I'm reading. It says, compare the Garden of Eden with the, gar with the Garden of Gethsemane. And that if we don't think about we're, we're, we're about the, the, the sacrifice, the absolute decision, he could have this could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. This was not a, a, a God controlled, oh, he's going to come through for us. No. Mm -hmm. He literally, to me, that was saying he had the world's hurts. Everything was on, on his shoulders. And so this statement, I consider them garbage. You know, he could have considered us garbage and said, you know what, I'm not going to go through this. This is not worth it. But he didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was very, very uh, impressive on me because he, he prayed. I thought he only prayed it twice, but it was three times. There are dimensions that we will never ever understand mm. about Christ's ordeal and, and suffering for us. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, just the fact that he experienced the agony of the second death while still alive. To die physically is one thing. To experience death while being alive is a totally different thing. And to experience the agony of the second death, which is the utter separation from God, is inexplicable in human words. That's just my opinion. based on what I read in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. 
And the Bible says he did it all because he saw value in you and in me. Mm-hmm. What that says about you and me, I would like for us to reflect on the next slide. Last week we haven't reflected because we're out of time. We have a few minutes here. So I'm going to start at the very top here with Thomas. Uh, what are some of your thoughts or maybe some of your emotions that you want to share or some of the things you may want to change in your behavior? And if all of us could summarize that in a sentence, that would be great. Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> there's a whole book here that says many things that we can live by, but the thing that gets me the most is that uh, we need to die daily to self. Mm. We need to pray for his forgiveness and his promises. And we need to pray for the daily filling of the Holy Spirit, that they will guide us and keep us out of the snares of uh, temptations and be ready to meet him. Mm. Thank you, Thomas. Doris and Dan. Now, my my takeaway from this parable again is that Christ thought so much of you and me that he sacrificed everything mm. for our salvation. Mm. In my heart, I really believe that thinking about the value of that sacrifice that he made at the cross is really worth my while because uh, without him, I would not be here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Sister Rita. My thought was that like the mustard seed and the pearl that I am that and I need not to be stagnated or what is it just not doing anything and collecting dust instead of continually growing Mm. in uh, my Lord. Thank you. you. Elder Lord is. Uh, the thought that comes to my mind is if Jesus saw so much value in, in me to do what he did for me, I must, I must ha- uh, value others mm. at least as much as Christ values me. And especially those who are hurting me, who are, have betrayed me, especially those I must see as highly valuable mm. Mm. and eminently redeemable. Mm-hmm. Diane? Well, I want to always um, regard the good news of salvation as very precious and dear Mm. and be joyful in the good news of salvation. And I want to be willing to give up all worldly temptations Mm. um, in order to follow Christ. Mm. Beautiful. I love how you combine the thoughts and uh, and the behaviors very well. Beautiful. Charmel and Jivika. Um, For me, my thought while listening to this parable and listening to others talk was, you know, we're constantly battling between good and evil in this world. Our plates are full and we start out very small. And as we spend time getting to know God and studying God's word, our faith and our connection goes stronger and stronger and polishes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and fine tunes that connection with God, then there comes a point where we finally realize there's nothing that we need except Jesus Christ in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And everything else becomes secondary. Yeah. And um, when we get to that point, it's a point of release because nothing else matters anymore in this world. Mm. That's my takeaway. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. My takeaway is basically similar to everybody's comments and shamans. Um, it's about the it's about the connection that we should have. We we should really make a diligent effort to have mm. with the with the word with with uh, with Jesus, the Holy Spirit. You know. Uh, Ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you every day mm -hmm. when you pray. And that's the connection to God. And he sacrificed, you know, Jesus died for us. And, you know, that the love there is uh, unmeasurable, mm -hmm. right? So um, the least we could do is to try every day to be more like him. Mm -hmm. You know, the, that connection is through prayer and having that connection and reading, studying the Bible and, you know, being, being a good disciple. Try to improve you, yourself mm -hmm. every day to be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, Elder Jivika and Elder Martha. Well, everything everyone has said has been a blessing to me tonight. Um, and I, I'd say my, my biggest takeaway is there's hope in our darkest moments or when we feel worthless or I'm very unlovable that mm. there's someone that loves us mm. and desires us and wants us and love begets love. How beautiful, how beautiful. I wanted us to be uplifted by the message of the following song named only a holy God. I invite you to contemplate at this kind of love. The verses say, who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else could make every king bow down? Who else can whisper in darkness trembles? Only a holy God. The song goes about depicting the greatness of God, but then it contrasts with what he did for us. When he says, who else could rescue me from my fallen? Who else could offer his only son? Who else invites me to call him father? Only a holy God, only my holy God. And then the invitation in the refrain is come and behold him, the one and the only cry out, sing holy forever, a holy God, come and worship the holy God.
Lord, you are the only God who could love us. Little specks of dirt, of sand, of nothing. So much that you would give your life for us. And tonight, we're just speechless. All we could say is thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be blessed, my good friends. Take good care of each other. And we'll see you next time. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. God bless. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.